and welcome back intrepid travelers to tyranny and our obviously evil playthrough <laughs> so far we've talked a little bit with people around here we did our first taste of combat beating back the rebels the rebel scum <laughs> and just you have my thanks fate binder i must attend to the rest of my soldiers hey. looks like we have to go over here sorry i can't you can and you will. Yep, climb up. Mm, have a look here. Ooh, potion of invisibility for 60 seconds. That's nice. Yeah, as you can see on the um the map. They give you a good indication of where you're meant to be going. Let's talk to this person. We'll teach these Oathbreakers a lesson. Can't do that. Right, I think we can leave this area now. I kind of wish it just centered automatically. We sing the anthem of pain. Here's another person. Cosma, fate binder. What an honor to have one of two nuns caught. Visit our humble hold fast. Need supplies? Bursting with energy, the merchant slams her palm down the screen. If so, you've come to the right place. So what will it be today? She spreads out a welcoming arm of her wares. Let's see what you have. Right, let's... Oh, Where's all this shit I've been picking up? There we go. There's all that shit. <laughs> let's trade everything. Oops. Oh, okay. Trades down here. So we want to keep all of those. We want to keep that. 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 We can't use the scroll. There we go. That's good enough. All right. What do we want? I want some more, like, two-handed weapons so I can kill quicker. Yep, one-handed bronze sword. No, that's not going to do that much more damage. Seven to ten, yeah, no. Yep, that's right, there we go. We got some money out of it. Fate Finder, a pleasure to have you join us. You never really know if one of Tunan's officers is battle ready until the fighting breaks out. She nods with approval. You clearly hold your own in a fight. A broad soldier, disfavored soldier, snaps to salute. And thank Kuros for that. There's been too much talk of late and not enough action. The Archon of War is planning his next move. Would you have him hasten his plan for your impatience? The superior officer glowers through the gap of her helm. Never, ma'am. Graven Ash protects. She holds her salute with a tightly clenched fist. I'm just eager to see Vendrian God buried under her own patched defenses. Need something? Graven Ash protects, indeed. Well, I could do the what of tell me about the disfavored. Because I might get some law points. Let's do it. 
We are the proud elite of Kiros, military strength selected from the finest northern stock and hammered against the anvil of war. If you want to put that in perspective, the disfavored are a sword, forged with care, then polished and sharpened to perfection. She clears her throat. The Scarlet Chorus are more of a rusty pitchfork dragged out of a swamp, effective in large numbers, but easily outclassed. Why hasn't the siege been resolved? Graver Dash protects indeed what have you survived. In my early days, I broke from my phalanx and ran at an enemy, received a spear in my gut for my efforts. It took the better part of an afternoon from the Archon's protection to patch me up. Learned a valuable lesson, too. When I was at Azura, I caught a hammer blow to the side of the head. All I remember is the ringing sound and feeling my skull shatter. From jawline to ear to top, I woke up hours later. The medic said there's a piece of helmet lodged in my brain. <laughs> my badge. My reminder. We owe it to the great general. He gives us strength to fight where others would flee and stand when others would fall. What a pile of dung. They're right about one thing. The disfavored have taken too many blows to the head. <laughs> uh, do you believe in Ash's protection? I believe in it all right, but I don't buy that he's doing anyone a favor. In war, death is a lesson. Survival is its own reward. If Ash protects his soldiers, the weakest of them occupy a space in the phalanx that could be better put to use. Oh, oh no, I'm going to annoy someone here. You don't believe in Ash's protection? You said that. Graven Ash gives his soldier a chance to improve, which is more than the voices of Narat allows. Hmm. You may be right. Ash invites weakness into the ranks. Sure. <laughs> Oh, good, I didn't get this favor with the disfavored. <laughs> you can find it everywhere. Those ironclads put on a big show, but I've crept through their disfavored camp tonight where all you can hear are grown men and women crying in their sleep. As you were. Need something? What's the situation here in Vendrian's well? The Earthbreakers hold the citadel of the heart of the valley, the one built around the base of the spire. Arroyo points east towards the tower distance. The Mitanni River has been our largest headache during the siege. It's unsafe for more armored troops to the ford, save for at key locations, and the enemy knows this as well as we do. I know we'd be a lot further along if the Scarlet Chorus used its alleged strength in numbers to ford the river themselves and overwhelm the enemy. As it is, we must take the valley slowly and advance the disfavored bulwark, since that's where the real work gets done. Because all it takes is numbers to cross a river. Because all it takes is numbers to take... To cross a river under a hail of arrows if the disfavored were quicker to act. Maybe the Venturing Guard wouldn't be so trained up to face us. Oh, we don't have the law. Aurora's correct. The slow advance will win out. Verse has a point. This. Let's just say the slow advance. Without question, patience and determination will deliver these tearsmen to us in chains. Let's see. What can you tell me? I've seen anything interesting during the war? I once saw a forge bound Allison set himself on fire. Occupational hazard. <laughs> that was an unpleasant day. The first of many, to be honest. I wasn't there to watch you proclaim the Edict of Storms, but I saw the devastation hit Stalwart and take up several cohorts of disfavored with it. She squeezes her eyes shut and shakes her head. Carry on. She taps her gauntlet to her breastplate in salute. Have a pleasant siege, fate binder. Kira should not have accepted the Vendarian surrender. All right, I saw a little bit of loot over this way. Let's pick that up first and then head out. I'm glad we've got athletics. This is really coming in handy. <laughs> oh, 
Oh no! Have you got subterfuge? No dice. God damn it. That's even worse to get to some loot but not be able to open it. On it. Actually. Yes. Just realize that you can hold and drag and get them both. On it. Right down to the disfavored camp. Three hours. Oh, there's time as well. There we go. <laughs> oh, there it is. Loading screen. Left click and drag the mouse to select multiple party members within the selection area. Slow down a moment. I know you're both eager to watch the Archons bicker over tactics. What's that? The voices of Narat told me that you've come as a mediator, considering the source well. I can't help but feel I'm only hearing half the story, so let's have it. What's so special about you? Let's see, I'm here to deliver an edict from Kiros. I have nothing to tell you. Let's see, oh, I don't have the subterfuge or the law. That's disappointing. I'm here to deliver an edict from Kiros. That makes a crazy kind of sense, considering how long the siege has taxed the armies. I can understand why Kiros would send you with an edict to speed things along. Have you read it? Do you know what it says? The Archons must claim ascension by Kiros's Day of Swords or all will perish. Yeah, why not? Let's tell the truth. It's good how this, like, there's actually a lot of lore points throughout this, but they have little pop-up boxes for you to actually learn what those names mean every single time. So Kiros, obviously the Overlord. Edict. A powerful magical spell. And there's Ascension Hall, traditional throne room of the Queen of Apex, where I slaughtered her. <laughs> Let's go that one. A loyalty with verse. Ooh. One more thing for the Archons to fight over. Well, thanks for cluing me in. If Kuros sends any lightning our way, just tell me when to duck. Let's just, yeah, let's just do the meeting. Hey, oh, I told her everything. Hey, don't let me hold you back. I'm sure whatever they're here to do is more important enough. That you don't need me stepping in your path. The war tent is just past the center of camp. Hey, don't be nasty. I told you the right stuff. One last thing. Be careful around those disfavored types. They take their work seriously. And most have suffered too many blows to the head. <laughs> Ooh, loot there. Oh, we don't have subterfuge. So that's the way out. The storm caller has arrived. The guards not as you approach. We've got lots of good names now. <laughs> storm caller. It is an honor to welcome you to disfavored camp. It must have been terrifying honor to be the mouthpiece of Kiros's magic. You lucky sod. Salute her grave and ash protects. Yep, why not? That's what they say to each other. That he does. The warrior nods in approval, then taps twice on the gate to signal your over. Be well, fate finder. Glory to Kiros. We're nice to our people. Like they're part of our army. You know, you gotta keep up morale. It's an evil army, but it's still an army. Ooh, what's here? Ooh, that looks nice. Yep. Take. Take it all. Ooh, I can open this one. <laughs> that wasn't so hard. We're just stealing everything from our own people. It's delightful. And it's funny, like, if you look at all the different people, they're actually wearing kind of different stuff every time. Like, that soldier and that one. Oh. This one's got the different mage sort of gear. Look at this guy.
Here we go. I'm Lucia. This is Marcus. That is David. Soldiers points to the armored man next to her. And you must be Fatebinder. From under her helmet, you hear an audible scoff. We've been assigned to Bevis. Bevis. Assigned to your hospitality, Marcus quickly interjects, while you remain on disfavored ground. If you should need a place to rest, we can make the necessary preparation. Can't figure out what like accents I want for these people. There's just so many. I'm never going to be able to keep up, and I'm always going to be mixing them up as well. What can we do for you? Oh, we're not a soldier, we're not a hunter. Pit fighter. <laughs> Why not? We're a pit fighter. T two soldiers trade a glance. A question better suited to the Scarlet Chorus camp. If you don't mind the smell, anyone looking for a fight could find one amongst those braggarts. Just take care you don't headbutt the wrong gang boss. In the heat of battle, there are some who wouldn't hesitate to cut your face off. Agent of Tunan or not. And uh, do we want to know about them? Sure. Tell me about yourself. Not sure there's much to tell. I trained at Fort Resolution. This is my first campaign, and I'm proud to be with the Legion. I was wounded at the Gates of Judgment, but Graven Ash's protection mended me good. I owe my life to him. Are you bragging that you let your guard down and took a spear to the gut? You really shouldn't boast about filthy tearsmen besting you in battle. Lucia rolls her eyes. You're bitter that Lord Ash never seems to notice you. <laughs> In all seriousness, I would take that spear again if it brought honor to the disfavored. Kiros knows we could use it. We are the elite fighters of the Northern Army, but somehow we still lack the Overlord's confidence. He shakes his head and sighs. Lucia? I do this, she enthusiastically lifts up her heavy shield, and I do this. She mockingly stabs at the air with her spear. <laughs> Lucia shrugs. Playing host is not my strong suit. <laughs> Sure, thank you. Ignore my sarcasm. I've seen the Legion through my share of the campaign. After so much bloodshed, our pretenses of honor can wear me down. She turns to the cautious eye your way. The North is my home, and I consider each and every one of the ironclad bastards in this camp to be family. You won't find another army where each member of the phalanx is as beloved and cherished as the next. Ah, uh, let's see. Oh, we could use some training. Hmm. That does sound good. Lucia, because she's the stabby javelin person. Finally, some fun to break up the monotony of this siege. Uh, let's see. What do we want to train? We've got enough money. We've got heaps of money to do this. Throwing weapons. Yep. Dodge. we got a lot of athletics. Oh, that's enough as I can train. Let's see, Marcus can train us. Oh, we can't train with him either. <laughs> oh well. Sorry. Ah, uh, you seem handy with a weapon, Lucia. It's favored favor one. Hmm. I'm handy in lots of ways, believe me. She winks. <laughs> weapon, so I. You can say I know what I'm doing. She just flirted with me. <laughs> Lucia, are you flirting with Tunan's fate binder? Relax, Marcus. There are plenty of camp slaves if I ever need to scratch an itch. Although, through the visors of her helm, you notice Lucia's eye roving up and down your body. <laughs> if you ever need someone warm your bedroll, let me know. I sleep in my armor. Hope you don't mind. Fair enough. Fairly well. I can't. I like him. Hmm. <laughs> oh, so we got some subterfuge experience from talking to them, it looks like. But there's some loot over here as well. Yeah, we can sell it. Can't do that. If Sotanus curses the air as the blade of thin iron breaks in half beneath his hammer. Repairing weapons from scrap isn't exactly why I got into this craft. But our supplies are spent. He wipes the sweat from his brow and gets a better look at you. 
Why not forge bronze? Bronze will do in a pinch, don't get me wrong. It can take a beating and get bent back into shape. Unlike this stubborn iron we have here. He glances at a pile of his work with dread, and we will always have plenty of tin and copper lying around, so supplies aren't the problem. It's a rare smith who can churn out military-grade bronze consistently. More often than not, it comes out soft. Look around camp. We're garbing the legions head to toe in iron because it's cheaper and easier to produce for the masses. Couldn't do that with bronze. They called it as favored the Iron Legion for a reason. Strategy and skill may be our backbone, but our claws are made of iron, the good stuff that comes from the smiths in life and its crossing. You mentioned an iron shortage. I'm afraid so that last shipment sent down the Matani went missing near Echo Call Crossing, and I'm afraid we won't be seeing any more now the valley is sealed. Forged bound iron is too nice responsibility. Keep your voice down! And Satan flinches and lowers his guard. Graven Ash doesn't want to cause a panic or pass any information to the Vendoring Guard. Best case scenario, the iron tumbles off a boat and is rusting on a riverbed. Worst case, it ends up in the enemy hands. Yeah, right. I'm supposed to do an evil run. Damn it. Well, I guess, like, evil to other people. This is our people? Maybe? <laughs> I appreciate that, as does the great general, more than you might guess. Maybe he isn't quick to offer his thanks to outsiders, but I know he'll be grateful for your help. It would be a boon to the war effort if our iron was recovered. <laughs> yeah, we'll say that one, even if I'm here to clean up the Archon's mess. <laughs> no need to salt the wound, fate finder. None of us is mistaken in thinking that the siege has gone exactly as planned. He glances to a crate beside it and points to a small set of notches on the wood. You see, that—that that is how we tell apart our iron shipments from the rest. Inconspicuous, so people don't go snooping around. You want to keep your eye out for these good hunting. So, like, what? The crate beside him. Oh, okay, these ones. Cool. There's a lot of story here, guys. It's gonna take a little bit of time to get through it all. <laughs> Ooh, nice. Ooh, that guy looks like he belongs in Worlds of Warcraft. <laughs> Definitely a World of Warcraft character. This whole tummy's blue. Ah, oh, these are the Archons. Good advice is flexible, changing with the moment. Besides, now we're agreeing with yesterday, you today. You should be happy. We know you hate going into battle with overwhelming odds on your side. If you're so terrified of the challenge, why not wait for that? I don't need your heckling. I need your scouting reports, or better yet, confirmation you quelled. Oh, I can't even keep up. We must make at least token effort to show them mercy after all. Mercy! They have already shat upon our mercy once before. These gutter-born Southburns deserve nothing better than death. Oh, calm down. We must leave something to rule, or have you forgotten Kyros' orders? Patience, old man. Graven Ash, he runs the disfavored. And voices of the rat. Ah, oh, okay. Whenever they said voices of Narat, I always thought it meant like, you know, a group that run the Scarlet Chorus. It's one guy who has multiple heads. Makes sense. Look at that guy's samurai on in the mountains now. The Tearsmen can barely count past nine. They have neither the capacity nor the cause to close off the mountain passes. Either way, that leaves the second and fourth cohort trapped outside the valley. The Archon of Ward pounds his staff on the ground to punctuate his words, a large and imposing man to begin with. His profile is made larger still by his hulking suit of armor that hums with mystic energy. Or it's the work of your perfidious Earthshakers. Only a fool would not suspect a traitorous Archon of poisoning the mind of his students with sedition. 
We would have killed the Earthshakers Guild for their master's treachery. But I'm sure you have some perfectly valid reason for allowing them to live as your pawns. The Archon of Secrets passes a scepter between his hands as he speaks, twirling the rod in hypnotic circles. Emerald luminescence seeps from the seams of the Archon's ragged red robes. The glow is most notable where his neck ought to be. His mask seems to float and spin, never pivoting or bending naturally. Hey, watch yourself. When these two get going, you don't want to get between them. Yeah, let's proclaim it. The... How did he sound like? The Queen Sire seeing his presence, the disfavored commander snaps into salute. No doubt your presence here will strike despair into the hearts of our enemy, Lord Ash. Lord Narat, our guest is here. Oh no, that's his thingy friend. Bow to the Archons. Glare. No, let's just glare at them. <laughs> Stormcaller, it is an honor to have you with us. I would imagine you are here <laughs> we with another favor of Kairos' edicts. Perhaps another catastrophe that will punish our foes for hiding behind their walls? My soldiers tell me you helped Commander Drottus on your way through Edring. You honor the court with your selfless cooperation, for that is the sort of camaraderie that Kairos demands of us all. On his last words, the Archon of Ward glares at the voice of Narat, furrowing his brow as he utters the word camaraderie. <laughs> I require no thanks for doing my sworn duty. Yeah, I require no thanks for doing my sworn duty. Modesty is your prerogative, but know that cooperation and goodwill have been rarities of late. You do your Lord Tunan a great honor by aiding your cousins in the disfavor. No, don't mind us while you trade your gushing praise. We're sure the Fatebinder has come because our company lacks in small talk. I come bearing Edict of Kiros. Once again, you bring us support in a time of need. We fondly remember your service to the Chorus in the taking of the Bastard City. We knew back then you were destined for great things. But we had not anticipated you would be twice honored with the task of proclamation. So... Do not keep us waiting. What is the Overlord's will? Oh, okay. The Overlord's loyal servants must hold Ascension Hall by Kiros's Day of Swords, or all in the valley shall perish. It seems you need some encouragement to work together in honor of your incompetence and disarray. Hmm. Oh, I don't know. So call them loyal. Say they need to work together or call them idiots. I'm calling them idiots. <laughs> Just what I'm going to do. <laughs> Loyalty with verse for saying that. And I own the favor with the voices of Narat for saying that. He's like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> the earth sways with each word you utter, the air thickening with warmth as you pronounce the tersely phrase commandment. It's every syllable drafted by the hand of Kiros, with the edict proclaimed, your pulse quickens and the muscles in your legs worn from a long trip down the mountains feel renewed. The tired limbs now nearly buoyant with vigor. The Overlord means to compel us into action. No doubt the avalanches in the mountains are part of this ultimatum. We must conquer the Oathbreakers or die in failure. There is no room for error. And no other way out of this valley alive. We'll need to advance across the Matani. We lose everything if we stand still. And we move to back up Plan Green. The Earthshakers didn't make it over the mountain in time. So we do this the hard way. Over the walls instead of through. So you found your backbone at last! Oh, we were worried past humiliations would make you soft, timid. That was a record for you, right? The baker's dozen lost in one sortie. If you had waited for the chorus reinforcements, maybe we'd have eyes and ears on the matter. Ah, 
Uh, let's see, bickering all you want, you're just wasting time. Are you too duff? It is your indecision and bickering that has saved this edict. Subterfuge. <laughs> yep, done. They call you the Archon of Secrets, but you certainly don't seem to know anything remotely useful. I second the fate binder. Thought you had the memories of one of those oath breakers rattling about that bronze gourd of yours. Would Kairos's mighty spy master please enlighten this gathering of allies with some scrap of strategic insight? The Archon of Secrets turns his head to the side until the face of his mask has turned around, and a new facet of the mask presents itself as facing forward. When next the Archon speaks, the trembling voice of a younger man can be heard. Our river was to be the bulwark, but with the Tidecasters slain, what hope remains? It's so cold in here. Help me, please. The Archon turns his head far to the side until the previous facet of his fate mask now looks forward. Our sources tell us the Oathbreakers had some sort of magical trick in store. But this knowledge is tinged with fear, trepidation. If we make a move for the Matani, we suspect the Oathbreakers will mount a counterattack that is equal parts valiant and futile. I know that voice at Matani Genev of the Vendarian Guard. Good ear, young Fatebinder. When the Vendrian Guard surrendered, Matani Yanev had the audacity to demand an audience. Being a gracious Archon we are, we obliged. What the good captain knew, we now know. Huh. So he absorbs souls, basically. Then enough talking, there's work to be done. Our lives hang in the balance because you did pick it like children. No more sitting idle. I expect with this favor to be on the march at once. Uh... Yeah, let's just say there's there's work to be done. My lord. Oh no. Iron Marshal Eranos looks more like a lady than a guy. I don't know. I don't know what... I don't know what, like, voice to go with. My Lord Barak and his band have been drilled into the Echo Call assault plan. The Crescent Runner should be briefing him as we speak regarding the latest enemy movements along the river. I will dispatch him at once. The Iron Marshal salutes, clapping her gaunt, yes, her, to her breastplate. Fifth Eye, and I will ensure the Chorus stands ready to march if the disfavored can take the river. The Chorus has the manpower to secure the outer rim of the valley. Uh. Our soldiers clamor for battle, and at last we shall have it. Verse, we command you to continue guarding the Fate Binder. Tunan's chosen is our honored guest, and must be shown our finest hospitality. I won't let you down, boss. She'll get through the campaign in one piece, as long as she doesn't do anything too stupid. Oh, oh, oh. As long as she doesn't do anything too stupid. And before we forget, we have a debt to settle. Last year, when our warriors got confused about supply lines, so kind of you to understand how things get muddled in the fog of war. The Archon of Secrets tosses several iron rings your way as he begins to leave. He taps the fifth eye on the shoulder and with one last twelve, he set the, the Archon departs with his underlings. Ooh, take the bribe or don't take the bribe. Fuck it. We're bribed. I'm bribing quite a person. The Archon of Secret lets out a small chuckle as he leaves. Fuck you. We want the money. Money means gear. Gear means Fine. power. The fool and his puppet are gone. Perhaps now I can hear myself think. Rarely do I question Kairos' judgment. But I will never understand why the voices of Narat is given such authority. I shudder to think what will become of us all should Tunan favor him in the end. Though the edict threatens the Scarlet Chorus just as it threatens us, I cannot shake the feeling that our allies will work against us. Queenslayer, I would ask that you join us in battle. If only for the satisfaction of your presence enraging the enemy. If you wish to be counted amongst the glorious, 
Speak with the Iron Marshal. She will direct the order of battle until we are ready for the final push into the Citadel. I'm sure if you scat shot a few soldiers, shot a few everything, I'm sure my brethren would be grateful for the assistance of a skilled outsider. Mmm. What should we do? Yeah, let's help. What if Scarlet, how would they be helping? I ask myself that question often. While we take the river crossing, the Scarlet Chorus should be using their sizable presence to remove the Oathbreaker patrols lurking in the outer valley. The Oathbreakers have made a sizable force outside the Citadel. We need the Chorus's manpower to scour the region. Otherwise, the Oathbreakers will attack at our heels once we cross the Matani. Yeah, sure. I will be at the training grounds readying the soldiers. Find me there when you are ready. She pauses clear. And though I am loath to mention it, the chorus can likely use your assistance. They certainly won't secure the outer valley on their own. Fifth eye will be somewhere in that rat's nest they call a camp. Due east, seek him out if you must. The time remaining until Curus's Day of Swords appears next to the current date on the navigation bar. Ooh. Must be met by this date or everyone in Vendry as well will die. Great, we've got eight days to kill an entire army. Fantastic. All right, I think we'll leave it there for today, and I will see you next time in Tyranny. <laughs> and scene. <laughs>